what is the specialty in Rojava? I mean, the uprising, the revolution, whatever you call it, and how, why Rojava took different routes from Arab Spring. Usually, you know that it's different. And the the, the opposition in Syria uh, using the policy of no war and no peace. Um, that's uh, that's what I thought is. Uh, I call the no war and no peace, the policy in, in Rojava of uh, PY Day, the Democratic Union Party uh, with the regime, basically. Why they think that is uh, a collaborating or betraying the Kurdish uh, issue or Kurdish movement. I mean, the opposition's opinion, that's what they think about it. And then, uh, do you really need to support Rojava as we are anarchist or socialist? while some of the anarchist people or the Marxists, they don't want really to, uh, to support the Rojava. And how do you benefit from uh, this um, experiment? Uh, and, um, and then, I don't know whether you have a time or not, finally, what is our expectation of the event uh, or experiment? Will it be successful? If it's not successful, why really we need to support it? I mean, that is the main uh, points that I picked up from my report and when I worked there. So um, I go through a few of them uh, briefly. So I think it's uh, given a chance to, uh, to everybody, to every comrade here to contribute or uh, discuss or uh, ask any question myself or the other comrade here. So in my opinion, there are uh, obviously speciality in, in Rojava and that speciality it made the, the revolution or the uprising successful, or even is uh, taking the different routes from uh, from uh, Arab Spring. And one one of the things um, I found is the will, the will and and determination and the power of the people, and the power of the people they wanted to 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 do major change, to make major change. That's one thing is I could not see, and I couldn't see in. Uh, Arab Spring or, or, or even in any other uprising uh, there. And, uh, and the second issue basically, again, uh, the majority of people um, happy, were happy and basically determined to work voluntarily in order for the, the, the experiment and event to be successful. Obviously, if people are working for money or hire to do some work, they don't do it properly. But if people voluntarily doing it and are consciously doing this sort of things, obviously it's, a, it's, a, it's a helping the, the, the atmosphere or helping the experiment, uh, experiment to be successful. And the third thing is, is for me, is uh, the uh, building or establishing so many local groups which is on the top of them that kept them the, the, the democracy movement of the society and created um, uh, in, uh, after the, the Assad uh, um, regime forced to be withdrawn from, uh, from Syria. So that's another point. I mean, uh, established so many local groups, so many group of communities, so many Common in different in different uh, in every single street in every uh, corner in every villages in every town and then on the top of that they set up the house of the people um, and when they couldn't really to sort out their problem they face it uh, they took it back to um, to the house of people and they discuss it and to find out the the thing and the the other point is that movement in Rojava didn't work or didn't create to create a liberal power or basically the nationalist power or the religious power. That is very, very important. You can see I'm mean, there and people from Arab, Turkmen, Chechen, or Christian, Yazidis, uh, Muslim, in any different uh, I mean, ethnic minority, they work together. They try really to uh, hard to make this uh, environment uh, successful. And the other speciality, and they knew one day, sooner or later, they approached, they, they facing the, uh, the, the, the powerful force, whether Islamist or whether it's uh, um, a Syrian regime or whether it's uh, um, um, regional neighbors. So therefore, they have set up the defense uh, force that is Yefaga and which is, if we translate it to uh, English, we can say, 
uh, People's Protection Unit, Women's Protection Unit, and on the top of that, they have set up two different force more, which is one of them are Saish. They try to basically to protect the people inside the, the town and the villages. They set up their own um, uh, their own checkpoint, and again, a special. Uh, forces uh, among the women to deal with the domestic violence, to deal with the rapes, to deal with any other abuses is being the, the, the woman is facing it. That is specialty for me. I mean, that is a special thing. That's why I made basically that successful so far. I can say so far uh, that that um, experience successful, and I can connect it this why the uh, why the. Uh, took different route from uh, uh, Arab stream. One of the things is basically the Kurdish people in, in Rojava, they knew what they want. They knew they wanted the revolution, the social revolution, not the political revolution. They wanted the social revolution that including basically the education <coughs> revolution, cultural revolution, environment revolution, you know, and uh, uh, an economic revolution. They didn't actually embrace the, uh, the, the liberal economic or the political, the, the Western country or the liberal political parliamentary system. They didn't. They did believe in direct democracy rather than the, the, the election. Well, that is uh, something is uh, is different, and again, setting up so many groups that is again which is not exist either in 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 Egypt that groups exist, especially among the the the, the anarchist and the libertarian people. But unfortunately, they are very tiny minority, as we know, so they could not actually change the direction of the movement there. And on the top of that. We could see in uh, in Libya or in Egypt or especially in Egypt or in Tunisia, you can see so many different liberal parties that have been supported by the Western country and, and America, uh, which is they work on their interests uh, rather than the interests of the people. But it's coming back to Syria, yet there were a liberal uh, party, but among the Kurdish people, the uh, Rojava, there wasn't many Liberal party. There was some some nationalist party. Some of them is belong to back to 1963. But in fact, they didn't have a much power. They didn't have a population. But when PYD, the, the uh, PYD, the, the Democratic Union Party, established after the invasion of uh, Iraq in in uh, Rojava in uh, Syria and Kurdistan, and uh, and and they had they they. they they were very, very popular and spread quickly among the people, and they have uh, so many supporters. So that that is, uh, and as you know, the PID is um, is m very close to PKK, and PKK obviously is not been in uh, working in favor of the Western country and American, and they uh, they they don't they don't like them, and still they are in the terrorist uh, list. So. That is another reason, uh, and so in the first place they didn't embrace the, the liberal, as I said, the liberal economy, <coughs> the political, um, um, the um, the parliamentary political system. This is again another another uh, point. I mean, why um, took a different route from the the Arab Spring, and also the revolution in Rojava was actually they believed that the revolution must start from the bottom of the society and must be social revolution as I said before and must be anti-power and anti uh, and uh, anti-authority and uh, anti-state uh, but in in the rest of the Arab country which is the revolution what they call is happened none of them they believe in that they believe only on the political changes not actually the social changes. The social revolution is different from the political changes we cannot change the system by 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 political uh, revolution, uh, so that 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 is another reason. So that is uh, basically makes very much difference. So they 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 in 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 general the Kurdish people they knew what they want and they they they, they knew what sort of direction they needed to take in order to achieve what they wanted. So 
And that is a couple of points I, I just, just uh, wanted to talk about. Yeah, I don't know whether I can go on or people want to contribute or discuss or ask in any question before I go further, I if I have the time. Yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, Ocalan, um, yeah, it's like it's a lot of, a lot of the rhetoric about um, local federated communities and, and that's something that's been adopted now in, in, in Syria with the things that they're doing and um, well, in, it's interesting because they call the, the things cantons and Switzerland is like, it used to have a direct democracy with different cantons where people could organize but then they, became, they had this civil war where there was a federal government established and, and then that was because the south of Switzerland wanted to break away and so the rest of them was like, no, you're gonna come under control they, sub they subjugate those cantons into the thing. And uh, in Syria now, I, I was reading the constitution of the, of the PYD, and, and there's like a president, and he has four years elected office, and there's, there's, it's basically, I, I, I'm, I'm having trouble seeing how on paper it's, it's different to a parliamentary democracy, this, this system, in all, in all but like name. I mean, where is the anti-state part of that? Mm. Uh, if I answer you, if I, if I, am, if I am honest with myself, I, I can say, and I have written in my report, there are a couple in, in Syria and Rojava, there are a, a couple of power, but power of Tebdam, the democracy, so, the, the, the movement of the democracy society, and also the DSA, democratic self-administration or democratic self-management. These two, they have a power, both of them. And in the first place, when the DSI, I'm a democratic self-administration, um, mm -hmm. set up in beginning of this year, the Tebdam, they set up that as just simply as a body to implement the policy which is, would be made by the Tebdam. Okay, that is my, I, uh, I've spoken to, to, to the top people there in DSA, and also I've spoken to the top people of the, uh, tell them them, but if, if you want to my answer and my uh, prediction, basically, this is one of the uh, this is one of the point in the end maybe makes it dangerous for the things because it's very very for me very very difficult for these couple of bodies to reconcile between themselves because this is if you want to or not it's a like semi state and in the end will be a semi state if it's not a state when you have a state. Obviously, the state embracing the embracing sorry embracing the liberal economy, embracing the parliamentary political system, embracing the free market, embracing anything which is, is at the moment exists in Western country and the and the United States. So in the end, whether the Tevdam has a power actually to abolish that or has a power actually to, tra to struggle hard against that. That is just something I cannot answer that. We have to leave it for the future. But what I believe, this generation is being grown up under the under the Tebdam, and they have a, they have a, this, they, 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 they are a challenging generation. They, they are defied the system. They are actually have a, adopt their own culture, with the, which is a culture of the revolutionary. I don't want you to go through the, the, Can I actually the, like make an addition and actually make correct something because in the um, um, social contract, which is I think important to point out that it's not called a uh, constitution, is that it actually sets um, legislative assemblies in cantons and uh, the president is, is not the president as we understand because the president is, is the president of the Trans Transnational Executive Council, which um, trans yeah, Transnational Executive Council, which doesn't work as as the president of, of any nation state or representative Why? governance way. Um, Why? Yeah. 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 something yeah. here? I think this would be very helpful. Uh, since I was there for 10 days looking into exactly yeah. this sort of thing. Um, basically what you have here is something I think might be historically unique. It's basically a dual power situation where both sides were sort of set up by the same guys. So, I mean, the blunt way to put it is essentially you have a dummy government. 
it, it, um, the government is essentially there for international relations, and it doesn't really control the mechanisms, of course, of power. There is a bottom-up structure, which was set up by Ted Dem, and that bottom-up structure exists and is functioning, and is the major way that decisions are made. It isn't talked about. When I first saw the, you know, the agreements, um, uh, the thing that stands for Constitution, I was like, well, where's the directly democratic part? But um, it's all there. I mean, and that's what they've really done. So the way it works is you have neighborhoods, roughly 300 uh, families, um, each has a neighborhood assembly. <coughs> that neighborhood assembly is a series of working groups, education, security, <coughs> you know, the, the usual kind of thing. Um, the, the, they, um, and then both the general assemblies uh, for each neighborhood and each working group sends delegates, which are not representatives, but delegates onto a higher body uh, in a neighborhood and then on to, uh, or, uh, and then to the municipality. In theory, there's a canton system, but it's kind of rough at this point. Um, and um, at each level, also, there has to be, four, uh, there's co-presidency system. All people who are officials, there has to be two of them, one male and one female. Um, the delegates have to be 40% female, and each count, mixed council is matched by an all-female council that has veto, veto power over it. And that's true both of the assemblies on each level and of the working groups, which also confederate on each level. So there's a total top, a bottom, bottom up, um, delegate-based, directly democratic system. They use majority vote for minor matters and consensus on major ones. Um, even the justice system is based on what are called peace and consensus committees, um, which again operate on the lowest possible level, and in theory the security guys, the Asayis, are answerable to them and not to the central government. Um, so it is a, a bottom-up, directly democratic system, and that's what they've been spending most of their time building. The central government is necessary in order to deal with outsiders, because, well, for example, the airport in, in, um, is still under the control of the Syrian government. Well, they could drive them out at any time. But you know, if you don't have a government that's recognized, you can't have an airport. You know, any kind of relationships, like if they want to sell oil, if they want to do any of that stuff, they have to have something that looks like a government. So they've set up this structure that has the formal, and, and it's done by political force trading, all these liberal parties with probably only 20 members, you have to have huge percentages. Um, and, and, and essentially it's for foreign consumption. It's like a foreign minister. Yeah, yeah, all except the except that it's got all the, it's got a parliament, it's got ministries, it's got all the trappings of the government. It's just going to keep growing and getting, gaining more power. Well, that's the danger. What they've been trying to do is to make sure that they don't have any control over either the army or the, uh, well, the Asayis, the security guys, I guess you could call them police. Um, they don't like to think of them as police. Well, what about natural resources? How, like, if, if one area has natural resources, how are they deciding how to distribute well, well, that's that's uh, that's a problem. At the moment, it's not much of a problem. They can't get back and forth between the cantons anyway. Um, they're cut off by Turkey. They're all under embargo. But that that's the kind of thing they have to figure out how to do once they get up to the point where it's a problem. Like, for example, at the moment, Jazeera has like I think, uh, well, is it like uh, one thousand two hundred oil wells, um, of which like maybe uh, one hundred and twenty are in service because it's just they're just supplying their own needs. They can't export. Um, once they can, then they're going to have to start, you know, that government's going to have a lot more significance. And one thing everybody talks about is how to set up control so it doesn't become a real government. I guess, I mean, a formal question. I want to hear David's experience in that. Are we moving too fast now to the political significance where you haven't had the experiences first? I'd much rather hear the experiences first of all informed and then discuss these issues at, at 2.45, like we said on the, on the map there. Just uh, uh, something to uh, David, basically to answer in that comment there. Um, um, it's, it's hard at the moment to do that, what you're saying, I mean, how can they help the other people? For instance, at, at, at Jazeera now, they have a, there is a very, very rich canton in terms of gas, phosphate, and uh, uh, also oil. And again, 70% of the wheat in Syria has been provided by, by uh, Jazeera. But the problem is because in the, the Jazeera and all the uh, Kurdish canton is um, even Kurdistan um, regional government, KRG, and the, and the rest of the government, they, they use the sanction against them. Mm -hmm. So I, mean, I was there, they told me they are happy actually to sell a pan of wheat for $200, between $200 and $250. But while I knew in Iraq, because I went from Iraq there, I, I knew in Iraq, the Iraqi government 
pay 600 to 700 dollars for one ton you know but the, the Kurdistan regional uh, government they didn't let them to to transfer the, the wheat to uh, to Iraqi Kurdistan and from there to transfer it to Baghdad even not by 600 um, dollars probably for 400 it's still worse off than they were so if you do not use okay they are very very rich in terms of that but if they don't let them to use the that resource is difficult at the moment. So I'm sure one day they came into to that decision because they sort out that problem in, for the um, for the residents in 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 um, well, Jazeera, you know, and by um, by having a very very uh, cheap uh, diesel and oil and. What they told me, they told me it's so cheap, it's the price is like price of water. It's cheaper than water, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, as I said, we've got, I've got two more people uh, who wanted to say something, then we'll come back to the, the, yeah, to the experiences okay. and we'll keep going. Let's rather keep going. Oh, okay. Come back later. Okay. Oh, we'll start again. Come on. Yeah. Did, did you want to say anything more than David? Did you want to jump in after? Well, no, no, I mean, I, I, I could just answer questions. I'm, um, I don't need to make a statement of any kind. Um, but, yeah, just to say, I mean, like, you know, I was part of a academic delegation, they called it. Uh, it was about eight people. We came in, um, and we talked to, you know, everybody that they could throw at us, from the medical people, the education people, the FGM people, um, people in the opposition, different um, ethnic representatives. Um, and we got to see councils and, um, uh, and, and various things in operation. Um, and, you know, I think that to just give a sense of the radicalism of what these people are actually doing here, the first place we visited was Asayij Academy. Asayij was, I mean, they got rid of the secret police immediately, of course. Um, Ted Dem is called Movement for a Democratic Society. And it was founded mostly by people in the PYD, which is the PKK Cortez thing. Um, and, um, and, but, but they decided that the party structure was not the way to make a revolution, because we all know where that leads. Um, so they like formed a group. It, it's got, I think it's technically got five political parties in it, although most of them are kind of paper parties. But it's also got the women's union, the youth union, various labor groups. Um, and those are the guys who have organized the directly democratic institution from the bottom up. Yeah. Um, and just to get a sense, as I was saying, of, of like how ambitious these guys are, um, we went to this Asayish Academy, um, and they told us their basic plan, yeah, the police academy, uh, is to um, ultimately give every, everybody in the country six weeks of police training so they can abolish police. <laughs> um, yeah, so this gives you a sense of what they're aiming for. Uh, and, you know, you have to take courses on feminist theory before you're allowed to touch a gun. It's, it's that kind of thing. <laughs> they're really serious about this stuff. Yeah, uh, okay, the, the other point basically is the opposition in Syria, especially opposition in, in Kurdistan. They don't want to join Kevdam, the um, movement of the democracy society and they don't want to join the administration has been set up and uh, and they um, also they are not happy with the PYD the Democratic Union Party and give them that is uh, as we say before is still uh, a part of the government's force is still in Hasaka Hasaka is the main town which is the governor of Syria sitting there uh, and at the time when I were there half on the hand of uh, um, the regime and the other half with the Kurdish forces and the, uh, the control of Kurdish war. But um, in June, um, is the balance slightly changes and the Kurdish people managed to get more, could control more places because there was a fighting and, uh, against uh, Assad and they defeated, Assad's regime defeated there and many of their forces joined the um, uh, Kurdish forces. So, um, and also in Kamishli, as David mentioned that, they have a very tiny minority land there, it's under control of the uh, regime uh, there, Assad's regime. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, and they are in control of uh, airport and again the post office. 
you know. But so um, the opposition, the, the opposition, they have at some point that they do not want to join the kingdom and to join the um, 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 democratic self-administration. And before I, before I answer that, I got to the point, I say two issues here, two issues, two, two questions is important. Um, what the Kurdish people, before the uprising, they asked for, what was they, basically they were hoping for, and what they achieved, that's the first one. And the second thing is, um, what is the attitude of the opposition, whether they are a Kurdish, op um, um, sorry, whether they are a Syrian free army or uh, the terrorist uh, groups like Al Qaeda or ISIS or uh, uh, Nusra, you know, what what is their attitude towards the Kurdish? If I can answer the, the 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 first one, basically, the Kurdish people never ever dreamed with this what they have achieved now. They wanted a simple right, like right to uh, to study in their language, right to have their own TV, for instance, their own radio. They the right to have not to be discriminated, just simple right uh, they, they want it. But now they control everything, and they have their own movement, they have their own administration, and they have their own forces, and they, they manage it to basically to avoid the, the destruction of their land, their building, their, their property, you know. So uh, what else they want at the moment? Uh, and again, what's the attitude of the, um, the, the opposition there? The attitude of the opposition is not really better than the, the, the Assad regime, because up to this moment, they do not, they do not believe in, for instance, self-determination, or even the autonomy, maybe Assad, if they, they comes out successfully uh, in the world, changing his mind or changes his policy to give autonomy, offer autonomy to Kurdish people, for instance, but even they don't, the, the opposition, they don't want that. So one of the things is that um, I, I call it no, no war policy of no war and no war, no peace policy in Rojava. So when I saw the opposition uh, there, there were about um, 20 political um, parties there, but I met uh, 12 of them uh, under the assembly, Kurd Kurdistan Assembly Political Party in, in, chaos. in Syria. This is in chaos? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they, they, these people, they, they want to basically, they want, uh, uh, one of their point was uh, they needed to have their own, uh, their own force, which is, was uh, very unacceptable by PYD and kept them as well. They, they want to, uh, they want the Kurdish people actually attack the force in Kamishli, Assad's force, and, and, and Hasaka. But that was uh, no good because uh, because why? Because because that policy they used it. I think for me it's a very good policy. While the, the government, whatever their force is there, whatever their power, they don't involve in 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 your own things. And again, don't forget they still the Assad regime pay the the, the salary to all employee which they had the, in the Kurdish region in Ifrin, in uh, in uh, Jazeera, in Kobani. And which is, is very very good for the running uh, running the the, the the economy. If it wasn't like that, while well, while well, those people they are not they don't work under the control of uh, um, of Assad regime. They work under the control of DSA and the Kebdam, the democracy, uh, the movement of democracy society, uh, which they work in the hospital, they work in the municipality, they work in the education, they work in uh, anywhere. They get their their. Their, their pay from the, the government, but they work for the uh, they get their pay from Assad. Uh, Assad, yeah. yeah. The they get the so uh, I mean, I'm just clarifying. I'm not making a joke. Yeah. yeah. Um, Why does the government continue to pay their? Um, pay I think I asked the same question to them. I, mean, I think probably I am convinced with their answer. I don't know whether people is convinced with that. They say to me. The government do not want to abandon that because if abandoning paying the salary to people, that means abandoning the land. That means in in indirect way acknowledging or admitting there is a there, there is a there is a, a Kurdish region and managed by themselves rather by by. They still buy the wheat, some of the wheat too. Sorry, you wanted to. So there is some kind of economic relation. I had a question at the back and then I've got two over here. 
Yeah, um, just a say, I'm, I'm from Nottingham, but I call it down. We're, we're having a day school at the end of January, which I'll, I'll say something about later on if that's okay. But I just want to throw one or two questions at David and Zach. Um, firstly, I mean, there's a lot of accusation thrown against the PYD and so on about its relationship with the Bazaar and so on that you touched on. But the YPG also organise in Aleppo, don't they? They organise elsewhere in Syria. So I think you might be able to judge what their relationship with the Assad regime by factors maybe than the financial payment for people working in the, the Rojava area. But you know, I think if you know anything about that, it would be interesting to know. What, what, I wanted to look, ask one or two questions about the constitution or the social contract that was, that, that was drafted, which when you look at it, is a very good democratic document about how a society should be run. But one of the things that I think I can't see in it um, is anything that touches on the issue of class, about the issue of the rich and the wealthy and, and ensuring that Society's run uh, is protect, protected from those sort of forces. And in Russia, I can understand why that is the case because I imagine if there are any rich people in Russia, they will have gone. Exactly. But I mean, when you, and it's interesting that the that social contract <laughs> talks about it as a Syrian document about spreading, presumably spreading that into other areas of Syria, but not into the areas of Iraq, they, the, uh, the Kurdish regional government there, which slightly worries me because in, in the Kurdish regional government, it's way different from Russia. Uh, it's a stable, bourgeois, very powerful, wealthy forces around Bazani and so on. I mean, what is the relationship? I mean, I know there's a trench of shame which I read in your articles about between uh, Syria and Iraq, but what's your estimation about how the Rojava, the spirit of democracy, might spread into the KRG and what the tension is there? So, uh, again, maybe both of you can uh, come back to that point, and then I've got, I've got three, uh, three points over here. One, two, three. Uh, uh, I think. Say something about that. Um, or do you want to? Oh, I mean, yeah, go ahead. But I could wait too. Neither of you want to answer. I mean, I, I agree with you. The social contract. I have a copy of uh, English one here, and I have an Arabic one at home. Um, I mean, you are more than welcome to copy as long as you send me back a copy. That's fine. I mean, it's quite a lot of good things, as you said. I mean, there is a social contract. Is. Uh, um, Government, any government wants it to be uh, uh, running by that, 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 that is good. But uh, um, in the end, in the end, I'm taking it back to this comrade's um, um, uh, view. In, in the end, I we, we do not know. It's, it depends on the future of the the the, 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 the movement in Syria, the, the future of self administration there, um, because. Um, uh, um, is uh, is I said there is there is a struggle between that couple of body. So obviously, if it's the body of the the, the semi government of self of self administration is is um, is getting victory basically or successful in the end over the kingdom, the 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 entire movement will be changed. And I think taking a different direction. I don't want to go through every single thing. But again, if they kept them uh, winning it, obviously there will, be, there will be a different issue. And I think they go further than the, the social contracts uh, things. It's, it, it depends. 